Time to get your fix. Come on down, get your Hello, my name is Zach Rye with Old Man Gaming. Welcome back to another horrible game review. Uh, before we get into it, a few disclaimers. Number one, the horrible in the title of this video does not necessarily refer to the content that I am reviewing, uh, but the review itself. Uh, in that case, I do snap judgment reviews, meaning I get about five to ten hours with the game, and I'm trying to give you the best idea whether you're going to enjoy it right off the bat or not, from what I can tell from there. In addition to that, I do not give scored reviews here on the channel. I don't believe in them for video games. I think it's one of the most subjective forms of art. So therefore, you will be hearing me give you an overview of the game. Then I will tell you the pros and the cons of the game, in my opinion, as all reviews are. And then I'll tell you whether I will personally be sticking with this game past the purposes of this review or not. That being said, what we're reviewing today is Rocket Arena. Uh, this is a little bit... Like I said, a little bit older. Uh, this is from 2019, um, but I just got around to playing it. You see there's not a lot of AAA games coming out right now or in the future, so I'm going back and doing some older ones since I only do one review a week. Um, just seeing what's out there, what to play, and what looks interesting. That being said, I couldn't help but be drawn to Rocket Arena. It is a very different type of shooter, uh, so let's get into what it is. Uh, Rocket Arena is a deathmatch, 3v3 in smaller arenas. Uh, it is a hero-based shooter, uh, with the very unique part of this being that each character mainly shoots rockets. The other interesting part about this is aside from actually dealing health damage and just trying to take an opponent down with shots, uh, you're actually trying to knock them out of the arena. There is kind of an invisible dome over the top and uh, over the walls. Uh, so you're trying to get them through that kind of invisible wall far enough out of the arena. Much in the same way that Smash Brothers works. Although, don't get this confused, this is not a side-scrolling brawler. It is very much a third-person shooter. It also centers around the fact that every one of these heroes shoots some sort of rocket or explosive-based device. Um, they use these to move as well. They can shoot at the ground to actually push themselves up. If they get close enough to a wall, they can kind of shoot diagonally down to propel themselves up the wall. Um, it's, a, it's a lot of aerial combat in this. It's very vertical, and it is very up in the air, which is interesting. We're going to get into that later. <clears throat> There's no real story here, not that I can tell. Uh, like I said, there is a cast of characters. I can't remember how many. I'd say like somewhere around 10. There's quite a few to pick from. I did not get to play them all. Um, but again, you have to, when you start up, you have to go into these co-op arenas uh, for five times just to get you used to the game, uh, which usually pits you against relatively useless AI opponents. Once that unlocks, you can head into co-op arenas where you team up with other players to take on AI opponents or just arenas where you take on players with players. Um, and, uh, you know, this is a relatively quick matchmaking time, so I am led to believe there is a decent amount of players here. I never waited longer than a minute, uh, so that's good. Um, and then that's it. I mean, I know that this is already seeming pretty short, but there's not a lot to the overview of this. It's really very straightforward. Uh, take shots at your opponent, uh, use your special abilities to your character, find a character you like that fits your play style, um, and try and push the opponents off the, the, the map. Uh, I will say there is a good variety of maps. Uh, I only actually replayed a map about two, maybe three times in my five hours with it, which is pretty impressive. Um, I will also say that uh, the variation in attacks and play styles is very interesting. Um, the modes also, there is, I don't know, I never played the same mode twice in a row. That being said, I did play knockout quite a bit, which is just your straightforward knock them out more than they knock you out play to 20 sort of thing but they have a lot of different game modes here from capture a rocket which is kind of like a uh, randomly locating domination thing um, to this other mode where you get you knock people out but you get turbocharged abilities um, yeah so <clears throat> that's the game 
That's all there is to it. Sorry for the cough, but I think we should just go right into the pros and cons of that because this is gonna be, that's going to be the meat of this review. All right, so the pro right off the bat I'm going to say is the uniqueness here. Uh, the, the gimmick of everybody shooting rockets is very interesting, and it's what kind of pulled me in. Uh, we're also going to kind of talk about it this in the cons, but while we're in the pros, I do want to say that as far as a shooter is, I this feels very different from anything else that I've played. Uh, there are some things that work and don't work. Again, we're going to talk about that. But um, as far as uniqueness goes, I've never had a shooter where I spend this much time in the air. Uh, I've never had a shooter where you had to knock them off the map instead of actually deal damage or, or kill them. Um, so it's a very vertical, very movement-based game, uh, which I, I enjoyed. I like that. I like that I spent most of the time floating through the air or getting shot in the air or shooting somebody else in the air. Uh, I like the fact that, like, it wasn't necessarily about where, how many times I got hit or how many times I hit the other person, but it was about the positioning. Uh, the next pro I want to give out is uh, the variation in characters. Like I said, there's a good amount of characters here, quite a few, and every one of them seems to play differently. Again, I did not have time to play all of them, uh, but I played at least three of them, and the three that I played felt extremely different. Like... Their attacks, their special attacks, their secondary attacks, everything felt very different. There is no real weapon pickups in this. There is some items you can pick up which give you like trip mines and like speed boosts and stuff. But other than that, you're not really collecting stuff. And the map is too small to really have something like that anyway. Uh, but that aside, the characters themselves felt very different in the moment, which I enjoy any game that allows you to actually feel like a character is different from another one. All right, so now we got to get to the cons, and there's a few cons, unfortunately. So as I was saying before, the uniqueness of this, there are some things that work and some things that don't work. Uh, number one, uh, with a bullet, is the movement in this game. Like, they did so many unique ideas with the propelling yourself with rockets and moving up walls with rockets and shots. Uh, and you play you play with them in the tutorial, which is really cool, and it leads you to believe that this is going to be really unique. Unfortunately, it doesn't really translate in the actual play. Every character has a triple jump, so you can jump three times in the air. Um, so you can you can stay afloat pretty much forever. So you never really need to do the rocket shot up the wall thing. Uh, especially since the levels themselves, while the game would like you to think they're very vertical, they're not. They're very small, they're very contained, and uh, they have peaks, but none of the peaks are really... Like, you could really triple jump to anything in the game. So why would you have to jump up the wall with this weird convoluted wall jump thing? Uh, and honestly, I didn't see any player do it, which bums me out. I almost wish they could have, like, worked a way that, like, they had this really unique way to move up a wall. And then they made another movement system that just basically made that thing useless. And the same with the shoot at the ground uh, to push yourself up. I never got more out of that than the triple jump. So, like, you're triple jumping. That's what you're doing. Um, so I, I didn't I didn't quite understand that. That didn't really hit with me. And it, it was a real bummer to, like, be excited about it from the tutorial and then get into the game and realize that it's useless. Uh, my next con would be the music. Now, the aesthetic in this game is not really for me. And what I'm saying is they went for a very cartoony, almost family-friendly Fortnite-style thing uh, where all the characters are very kind of over the top, but they're very they're very almost goofy looking. Uh, like a big goofy pirate and a very cute, a cute raccoon that's wearing a stump on its head and another guy who's like a, a very obvious pretty boy with a pet pterodactyl. Like, it's very centered around kind of like almost kid-focused hero shooters, which doesn't really bother me that much. It's not really my type of aesthetic, honestly. But... The music they attach to this is just so doofy and corny and just blink bonks and wank wonks that uh, it just any sort of severity of situation is completely undermined by the music. And I felt myself kind of, it's weird in a shooter you almost need some sort of music or no music at all to really kind of get you into it and uh, this, this it just takes you out of it. It almost makes you worse at playing if you can believe that. Um, so I really didn't like the music. Huge con, in my opinion. Uh, my next con is... 
like I said, they tried some things, and I appreciate that they tried some things, but some of it just lacks this. Like, okay, when you hear it's a shooter with just rocket launchers, you get excited. You almost, especially the older players, they harken back to Halo, and they get they get really excited for those crazy, like, everybody's got rocket launchers games. Um, and that that's what you think this is going to be, just a game based around that. And it's just not. It's like Smash Brothers. It's like a third-person shooter Smash Brothers. Um, so and the rockets just desensitize you to it. Uh, nobody takes any real damage from them. I mean, there is no damage in the game. You, like I said, you're trying to push them off off the map. Um, and with the way the health system works, is once you've taken enough damage, you if you get hit, you'll just get shot off the map. But you can actually just like hide, and that meter will go down. So it it like lessens the severity and coolness of all these really interesting rockets. I don't know how to fix that problem because you don't want one shot kills that get old real fast. Um, but it, I don't know. There's just, there's just some things that like, this is a really good idea for a game on paper, but then when you put it into practice, it just doesn't quite come together right. It's the same with the maps. The maps are incredibly tight and incredibly small. I understand why they did that. They're trying to like really have a frantic, uh, action scene just like right in the, in the moment. They don't want you to be able to run around and camp and hide. That's fine. But because of that, when you put in these modes like the, the, the domination rocket capture mode, uh, there's, there's nothing to getting to the next plate. There's no point to fight. You're just all fighting in the center, and then sometimes somebody captures a zone. Like, it doesn't really make much difference. Um, and because of that, it just, it just hurts the game. It hurts the game overall, and I think it gets very monotonous and very old very fast. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I do want to just mention a couple of pros that I forgot about in the interest of fairness. Uh, just when I was going back over my notes, I missed them. So just an extended little pro section. Uh, number one, they make getting into parties really easy. Anytime you've played on a team, when you're going into the matchmaking for the next team, it shows you the two people uh, that you played with, and it has an invite button right there built in, so you can just immediately invite them, uh, which is really cool. And I actually got into a couple of parties that way. Um, and it was really easy to play with uh, with no names um, or randoms, uh, much easier than a lot of other shooters. So I like that. The other thing I do want to say really quickly is, while I'm sure there is some monetization on the back end because it's EA, everything I saw was earnable in-game. I'm sure that you will have to really grind it out. But I was earning all the in-game currencies that I saw at the top without having to pay for them. So I feel like I could eventually earn everything. Even though that there is a battle pass system in play here, there are everything that I saw I could eventually earn. Um, not saying that there isn't some of that later on if I, if I played more, but from what I saw in the early goings, everything seemed to be earnable in-game. Uh, so final thoughts, whether or not I'm going to stick with it, and the answer is probably no on this one. Like I said, it just doesn't come together Welcome right. To I feel Arena. like this is Let's a great idea for something that, that doesn't have the follow-through it needs. And no shot to the game developers or even EA, I think they made a good try at it. It's not a super buggy game. It works, and that's, you know, in 2020, that's a miracle in itself. But the game itself just doesn't kind of... You can it gets old three times. really fast and uh, kind of makes you want to put it down. Um, like, even if even if, even if playing, like, two or three matches a day before it went to something else, I just don't see myself sticking with this game for any period of time. So I've got to say I probably wouldn't be playing it overall. However, I, I hope this review jump. helped you guys out there. I hope... It helped you made a decision one way or the another. I will say this game is free via Games Pass Ultimate if you have Games Pass Ultimate through EA Play, but only on console because EA Play is not available on Fire PC your walls yet, to, rocket uh, to Games Pass Ultimate users. So uh, keep that in mind. And until the next review, you guys can reach us on Facebook at Old Man Gaming DH, on Twitter at Old Man Gaming 9. You can join our Discord. The link will be in the description below. And you can influence this in all of our shows from there. And until next Use week, the you Dodge can, uh, as long as you guys keep rocks. watching and listening, we'll keep making them. See you then.